Hey everybody, welcome back to another Mark Harville Art painting tutorial. And I ask you to please subscribe to this channel, please like um, the uh, episode, and please share it. I'd appreciate that as well. I also appreciate all of your comments. So let me tell you what happened here recently. I've, I recently uh, just completed this painting, this little kind of a fairy tale cottage painting, and I actually recorded me painting this then there was over 22 hours of video footage um, of, of me painting this painting and providing a little bit of tutorial with it along the way um, I went to edit the video um, somehow the video got corrupted um, it's probably user error um, unfortunately I lost much of the video now the good news is I did recorded on two different flash drives and so I was able to at least still have one flash drive that was still not corrupted and so um, all I was unfortunately able to salvage and share with you on this video today is me actually painting the grass which it's an unfortunate thing um, technology can sometimes be a wonderful blessing and sometimes it could be a great curse and in this case um, Technology was not my friend, but uh, I will say that um, on my journey as an artist and as, as trying to improve my own skills, um, grass had typically been kind of a challenge for me um, because usually what would happen is that um, my blades of grass were just entirely too large for the plane in which they resided. Um, and the value system was a little bit out of whack for for my grasses so um, i've just been perfecting and trying to improve the creation of grass and i think i've come up with a method um, that uh, is not only quick but also i think very effective to create some really good um, realistic grass so in this episode I apologize I will not be able to show you the entire painting process. We will though go over how to put in some good effective and realistic grass. So thanks uh, for joining me. Uh, sit back and I hope this will be uh, educational and enjoyable. Thank you. Now I was not able to show it but I used acrylic to just more or less block in my shadows and my highlights for the grass. And I'm kind of using a mid-tone for both the shadow area and for the highlighted area. Again, that's with acrylics. But as I come back over this now with my fan brush, I've switched to an oil palette and I'm using Liquin and I'm mixing it uh, about 50-50 with, um, with some black oil paint. This would be like a midnight black. And in the shadow areas, I'm just, I'm just dabbing. I'm dabbing, kind of pushing downward a little bit. It's kind of creating a little bit of a, of a grass blade effect. But I'm just going over everything and with that liquid, it's not really painting over the surface, it's actually just kind of darkening or staining that underpainting, that, that acrylic kind of mid-tone. So I'll just go through here and I'll add this Midnight Black and um, Liquin mixture. When I went over the highlighted area, I just used a little bit more sap green into that liquid mixture um, and did kind of the same thing. Now I let that dry just a, a bit. It will dry fairly quick because um, liquid does allow the oil paints to dry fast. I'm also using a fast drawing oil called Griffin Alkyd Oil Paints from Windsor & Newton. Um, but what I'm doing now is I'm, uh, I've mixed together kind of a light yellow, kind of green yellow and I'm not even using any medium now. 
um, I'm using pretty much just the oil directly from the tube. And uh, again, I'm using titanium white, lemon yellow, and a little bit of sap green. And I'm letting it stay f somewhat thick. It's a little bit thicker now. And I'm just gently applying it with my fan brush. And this effect will begin, it'll be, um, begin to form those individual grass blades. So we've added our shadows first. Now we're coming back with the highlights. The highlights will be just the oil, pretty much straight from the tube. And you're not, you're applying very little pressure. So I'm just dabbing, I'm kind of stippling on with this fan brush, um, these effects. Now, the paint is applying a little thicker now, and it's actually kind of standing out, kind of a little bit um, standing proud, just a little bit off of the canvas. And that's kind of what you want. So that, that first initial underpainting, it needs to be flat and have really no texture. When you add, and of course you can do the underpainting in oil as long as you let it dry. I decided to use acrylic because it dries fast and I can keep working quickly. The step, the second step was just creating the liquid and the shadow medium together. Um, so I've used ivory black and sap green and liquid in about equal parts and covered the canvas. That again is not really painting on so much as it's just darkening or staining that underpainting. Step three is adding the thicker paint and it'll begin to really stand off as I said kind of stand proud off of the canvas and really begin to add that texture. And, it'll, and because I'm kind of using kind of a horizontal stroke with the fan brush, I can get these effects where they begin to really take on the, the appearance of, of grass. Now I'm coming back with the rigger brush and I've, as you can see, I've flattened that, that brush almost like, like a palette knife. I flattened it really thin to kind of like a, a razor's edge and I'm using that thick paint and I'm just kind of dabbing on little blades of individual grass. So I can come through now and if I want to make a little bit more prominent the grass blade, as you can see, I kind of as it, as it contrasts against the dark shadow, it can really stand out. And I can just kind of pick and choose, kind of jumping around, bouncing around. I don't need to cover everything. Most of the work is done for me, but I do want to kind of create some individual clumps of, of these blades of grass, and I'm kind of going in all different directions. Um, you know, grass is not going to stand out very often, honestly, unless there's a, a big gust of wind. It's not going to be standing up in kind of the same patterns and directions. They're going to be kind of facing all sorts of directions, and that will help with that illusion of realism. And I can add now kind of that final thick coat of paint, my, my tonal best, by just using Windsor Lemon and Titanium White, and I can create a very, very bright yellow, and that'll be my brightest highlight and I use that at the very end to kind of go over and create some some effects like I'm having little bits of sun speckles or sunbursts that are really light and really um, really popping on the canvas. Now I'm coming back and adding a few dark blades of grass uh, just to add some more contrast kind of give it some separation so I'm still using that rigger brush and I'm flattening it out and I have very little paint thinners or mediums I'm it's really right from the tube 
And if your tube of paint's too too stiff, you may need to add a little bit of of spirits or or paint thinner, but but not a lot because I want this to stand out pretty thick too. And I'm just jumping around and I'm adding tiny blades of dark that um, you know again can can really help with that that contrast. If I really want something to stand out a little bit against that that bright background. And uh, I can just create some additional shadowing. So this is more or less my pretty simple process for creating some very effective grass that looks quite real and uh, creates kind of a, a neat illusion. And it, and it doesn't have to kill you. Uh, you don't have to work yourself to death to get that done. So if you're like me and you've had struggles in the past with m making effective grass blades, um, give this a try and uh, see if it works for you. You know, it will make your life a lot easier. You don't have to kill yourself making individual blades of grass. You just kind of want to do them in mass. The most, most of it you can do in mass. And then at the very end, is you bring in your tonal best. And those final highlights, you can come in with a few individual blades and by just adding a few randomly interspersed throughout the patch of grass that you're painting, uh, it'll give the illusion like you have worked very, very long and hard to get every single blade of grass. So I hope that was helpful for you. I ask you please, again, if you've not done so, to subscribe. Please share the video. And hopefully uh, you'll join me again real soon for another painting tutorial video. I'm sorry again I couldn't show you the entire painting process. It was kind of uh, fun to do and had a lot of uh, fun details, something a little bit different. But uh, unfortunately, it didn't work this time. But I'm sure that uh, we could probably make up for that loss in the future with some, some further new video. And if you have any requests, please add that into your comment section. I'll be happy to read that and take those requests into consideration if there's something that you'd like to see that I've not already demonstrated. And there's a chance that maybe I've not done it myself, and it may be a new experience for me too, and I'll just have to figure out how to make it work, and maybe we can figure it out together. So I'm just adding some, some final little touches here. This is the point where I'm standing back and I'm looking at it from a distance and trying to determine if there's something else that's kind of needed. I'm going through my shadow areas. I felt the shadow areas of the grass were a little bit too dark, so I mixed together a little bit more sap green and blue and a little bit of white and created this kind of uh, bluish green tone that was a little bit lighter and was able to go over those shadow regions and create a little bit more texture and definition. And I felt that that was kind of what was lacking as I stood back and looked at it. So that's really all you see me doing. And you see I'm trying to keep it all in, in little clumps and, and having little ridges and little patches. That way it kind of at, continues to add to that realism. So. That just about sums up uh, painting grass. And I hope this was helpful for you. I look forward to you joining me again real soon for the next uh, video tutorial. And uh, happy painting and God bless, as uh, Bob Rice used to always say. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.